Hey friends, Monoducks here. I just wanted to do a quick um, exploration of modular sequencing. And specifically, I wanted to put this together for Discipline Commotion, who just got himself a Clock Sequential Control Module 1027. Um, so congrats to you. I think it's a really cool sequencer. Um, and I just want to put this up here to make sure you're having as much fun as you can have with it. Um, since there were some issues in your first attempt with it, I wanted to just show you, before I get into this, how I troubleshoot stuff. I found that adding a sequencer to your patch is a little bit more complex and less intuitive than you, than you might first think, or at least that's how it was for me. So, when in doubt, I want to make sure that every aspect of my patch is working and and that I understand exactly how things are going together. So just going step by step, I'm going to pick an oscillator here. And I'm going to run that into my mixer. My mixer output is running through the 2600 as usual. And I should have sound. There we go. Got a saw wave. So we know the oscillator is working. So let's go to the next uh, step in making just a standard standard patch. So I'm going to take that saw wave, run it into my filter and make sure that that works. Signal in and then signal out to my mixer. Turn it up. Great, everything's working. So you can go stage by stage like this. So if I want to add next a VCA, which is usually the last link in our chain, Take a signal out from the filter. Turn on my mixer and you can't hear anything because the VCA is not open. Now you can. All right, so that gives us our basic um, voltage controlled oscillator patch without the envelope generator. Um, so when we start to incorporate the sequencer, something to bear in mind is that if you compare it to using a keyboard, every time you press a key on your keyboard, you're, you're doing two things. You're sending voltage control to your oscillators, which determines their frequency or pitch. And by the, by the fact of the key being pressed down, you're sending gates, which tell your VCA to open. So voltage control for pitch and gates to uh, fire generator envelope generators and open VCAs. Both of those functions have to be taken care of by your se sequencer. Um, so that's first thing to bear in mind. Um, so what I'm going to do, I've got control voltages on three channels here. I'm just going to take channel A. And I'm going to send that into, since I'm using a, a System 55 oscillator, I'm just going to send it into the link frequency and press play. You can't hear anything because the VCA is not open. And I can't hear anything because my mixer's down. All right, so we're halfway there. We've got sound coming through the oscillators, but if I leave the mixer open and turn the VCA down, then we don't have anything. So now we need to use the envelope generator to open the VCA. So I'm going to take an output from the envelope generator, run it into voltage control on the VCA. You'll notice nothing is happening because we don't have anything sending an S-trig to the envelope generator. Uh, System 55 has to use S-trigs, so that means i got to use my interface module. I'm going to take an S-trig out, run it to the S-trig in, and you heard it fire, but there's nothing coming into this. So that's where the clock out uh, output on the 1027 comes into play. We're going to take that clock out, and I'm running it into the V-trig again, which is the other end of this. S-trig connecting my envelope generator. And now we have everything. My VCA is turned down because my envelope is telling it what to do.
And you may, um, there's an interesting aspect of the, of the 1027 is that you have pulse width on the oscillator that's controlling the tempo of this thing. So that's an oscillator controlling it. And if I change the pulse width, sometimes, depending on how the envelope generator is set, I can end up getting two uh, triggers. So you can see how how different that sounds. So if you're getting artifacts that you don't want um, based on your envelope settings, then make sure you're not adding to how long this is open by having a, a wide pulse width. So we'll take that all the way down. And then you're you're getting only what's uh, what's been shaped by your envelope generator. So just something to bear in mind. Okay, so you've got now CV control over your oscillator. That's going this way. You've got clock out controlling your envelope generator, which is controlling your VCA, and that's the basic setup. If you want to tune this um, to set up. Uh, to set up your, your sequence. The way I normally do this is I just open up my VCA and I'm gonna to go to reset and you can just go one at a time. step through it, set your pitches. This is very, very sensitive. That's normally how I would do that. Oh, let me turn down the VCA. That's why it sounded like that. If you want to um, shorten this sequence, so it's, you know, by default it's eight steps, you can take one of these gates. Let's say I want it to be gate number four. I'm going to take that out. From the position gates and go into my reset input so that when I get to number four it's going to reset. So instead of playing through the step at four that starts us over. If you wanted to have step four you put it in five. So that's an interesting thing you can do. Uh, you can actually deactivate your sequencer as well. So let me go when I get to that step. And it stops. So you can, you can do this to um, have all sorts of modulations uh, when you press a key on the keyboard. Uh, speaking of which, if you want to transpose this sequence, so let's get this going again. Then this is a, another counterintuitive thing, but these um, CV voltages are going into the voltage input on my oscillator. If I want to transpose what this is doing, then I need to use CV from my keyboard actually into the oscillator as well. 
Um, if you don't have an oscillator controller module, that's no problem. What you can do, I'm going to take this channel A that's running into the oscillator, and instead I'm going to send it into my mixer. And since I want to transpose that sequence, what I'm really going to be doing is adding the CV from my keyboard together with the CV from row one, mixing them, and then taking that signal and sending that into my CV control on my oscillator. I'm going to take this down a little bit. Oops. Okay, so on my keyboard, I'm going to press the bottom most key and the highest key. Middle C something. So that's how you combine both your um, keyboard CV and the uh, sequencer CV to get a transposable sequence. You'll notice you want to time your key presses exactly with the tempo so you don't get weird clicky things. Of course, you have um, three rows of uh, CV output that um, basically is saved per step. That doesn't have to be an oscillator, it could be something else. So let's go back to what we had to begin with. And I'm going to take channel A, run it into my oscillator. So this is going to be pitches. Let's take uh, channel B and do something different with it. So channel B. Hmm, let's run it into the oscillator, so that's going to control, I mean, the filter, so that's going to control the filter. Let's see what that sounds like. So, of course, that can be anything anything you want it to be. So lots of different things you can do with it. Um, and yeah, I would just say experiment, have fun. Hopefully this will help you get started on uh, some some patches that will work out for you. Um, I would be very curious, uh, Discipline Commotion, I'm talking to you now. I would be very curious to hear what this can do with your Odyssey. I think that would be a nice mix. Um, anyway, it's a great module. I think it's a lot of fun. And I wanted to... Um, get this video out before I rearrange my case. Um, if you have any questions about sequencing or anything else that I showed in this, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments. And thanks as always for watching. Bye.